Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel to go funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything that you guys do. We appreciate. Uh, find us on Facebook and Instagram as Funny and Jesse. Say hi or say hi back. Our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. Subscribe and enjoy the content that we put out. So today I'm going to be reacting to Last Challenge and the Best Call Amid did that uh, part 4 of 12. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. From here, just read a few lines. See, just a few lines. Start from the top and all this. But try to read as you would read the Quran at home. You know, like the young child was trying to read. Okay. Try, try. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in kuntum tu'minuna billahi haqqa. Fa'aminu bi wa la takhafu inna lakum indallahi jannatin nuzula. فلا أسبقنكم إلى الله لا أعدها لكم ثم لا أتينكم نزلة أخرى وإنكم لا تعرفون السبيل إلى قبلة العليا فقال له توما الحواري مولانا إن لا نملك من ذلك علما فقال له عيسى أنا هو الصراط إلى الله حقا وَمِن دُونِي لَا تَسْتَطِيعُونَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا I'm very happy that my brothers are as disciplined as the American soldiers. Last night I, I lectured to them at, uh, in Dhamam, was it? Dahran, in Dahran. And I noticed the discipline, which we envy, I envied. That they sat there throughout the lecture, and the chairman, he finished his uh, contribution. Then he called another Qari to end it with a prayer. With, and the American soldiers didn't move. It doesn't happen to us. While our chairman is still talking, he says, now the lecture is over, and you find people start scattering. Not the American soldier. He is disciplined, trained, and something that we can emulate. In this one little instruction, I'm glad that my brethren held their peace. But in Riyadh, when they heard this, you know, the whole hall was howling with laughter. Jazakallah. So now this is the challenge which they have met. The Arab knows what it, what it is worth, but you can't catch fish with this in Malaysia, in Bangladesh, in Indonesia, in Africa. They can catch fish with this. They say, look, here it is, your Quran challenges, and we have produced the challenge, we have answered your challenge. And in that, words from the Quran about 20 to 40 percent are words picked from the Quranic text and fitted in hook or by crook somehow to make it sound Quranic. So this book is a challenge, is a standing challenge. Not only in its eloquence, but in its substance matter. Could never have come from Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. From the scientific point of view, I can show you something there. From the psychological point of view, from the Gainia ecological point of view and so on and so on and each and every one the man of learning we will marvel is that a man in the desert 1400 years ago could never have in invented this book he could never have written this book this is not the work of man the best call out of this final book the final revelation the last challenge is that the holy prophet Muhammad is in Medina, towards the end of his earthly life, he is relaxed, the whole of Arabia was at his feet, they had embraced Islam, he can sit back and relax. It was simply a question of polishing up the Muslims, making them better Muslims. As a people as a whole, Saudi Arabia, not known as Saudi as Arabia, they had accepted Islam. He can sit back and relax in his old age. Not so. Allah bari ta'ala sends Akhi Jibreel, the Archangel Gabriel, and commands him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ 
Bashir wa Nazir wa lakin aktsar an-nas la yalamun. Said we have not sent you O Muhammad except as a giver of glad tidings and as a warner. Wa lakin aktsar an-nas la yalamun. But the bulk of mankind they still do not know. There's no time to sit back. There's no time to relax. There's work to be done. Wa lakin aktsar an-nas la yalamun. But the bulk of mankind still don't know. They haven't received the message. Arabia is there, but is Arabia the whole world? Are they Allah's only people? No. The whole world is hungry and thirsty for this message of God, the last and final revelation. What can he do? He couldn't run in all directions. Impossible. Fourteen hundred years ago in the desert, what can he do? The best thing he could do was to call the scribes, people who could read and write. Called the scribes, people who could write, and dictated letters. Five letters that we know of, most commonly known. Five letters. One to the emperor of Persia, the emperor at Constantinople, the king of Egypt, the king of Yemen, and the nagas of Abyssinia. These five, everybody quotes. But he wrote three hundred letters. Fourteen hundred years ago, in the desert, he wrote three hundred letters to people, chiefs, and nobles all over. His surroundings, 300. In modern parlance, if you convert it today, we would say 300,000 letters he wrote. The busiest man in history. Nobody would give him peace. He had a nation to build, a religion to complete, to perfect, and he's writing letters, calling scribes, writing letters, 300. Out of the one that went, I have seen one out of those five. I saw it in the Topkapi Museum in Istanbul, Turkey. It is well preserved. The Turks have preserved it well. 1400 year old letter. It's like parchment. Something like leather but parchment. The writing I couldn't decipher because it is written scratchy writing. 1400 years ago, the way they used to write. Today, for our benefit, mostly for the non-Arab, they now make it easier for us. Bold, round hand with the vowel points at the respective places, making it easy for us to read. The Arab? He can read without those vowel points because it is his language. But we, the non-Arabs, we need those vowel points. They were not there in the, in the beginning. Because he understood his language and he could make out. This is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praises due to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. But now the non-Arab, without the vowel points, he, will, he won't know whether to say Alhamdo or Ilhamdo or Ulhamdo. He won't know what is what, how to pronounce his word. So for the benefit of the non-Arab, these vowel points were added, and we are now in a position to read it more easily. So side by side with the script, that parchment, there is another facsimile of that in modern handwriting. So if you read the modern one, today's one, then you'll be able to read the other one. Because you can see now, you can have something to lean on. You say, yes, I can see it's written there, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. From Muhammad Rasulullah, from Muhammad the Messenger of God, to Heraclius, the Emperor at Constantinople, accept Islam and be benefited. Then an ayah from the Quran, Qul, say, Ya Ahl al Kitab, O people of the book, O Jews and Christians, Ta'ala, come. Ila kalimatin sawa'im baynana wa baynakum, that we come to common terms as between us and you. Let us get onto a common platform. And the terms and conditions of getting together. This man in the desert gave out. Not him, Allah gave through him. Number one, sa Allah na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah, the one and only God that there is. By the way, this is the name of God. In the language of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, the name for God Almighty is Allah. You can call him by any name. The Muslim would say, call him by any name except that the name be not contaminated. Call God, the Quran says, by any name. Call him Rahman, call him Rahim, call him by any name, the most beautiful name befitting to him. But any name that is contaminated, you do not use for him. Meaning that if you use a name and it conjures up a mental picture of a man or a woman or an animal, um, I'm trying to imagine what would have been achieved had other 
denominations or various religions come together with um, Islam, you know, what could have been created and what ter it, it depends on how you imagine it because I'm thinking if they all came together under common terms to um, perfect whatever religion they would have spoken about, I think the world would have been, religion itself would have been insane. Imagine one powerful religion that, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just wild in my thinking, but I think they could have achieved something great. Um, people would be in a different place when it comes to religion, you know. Those are just my thoughts, but if you have different thoughts, feel free to comment. I feel like the world would have just been different, but I, I feel like there's also a reason as to why uh, that didn't come to be. There's always a reason behind something, and whatever the, re the, the reason, we're still surviving. We still have uh, religions now. We have the chance to be part of them, explore them, or not be part of them, but learn about them and see whatever you find in those religions, you know. But otherwise, I think I would root for the idea of coming together. I don't know about you guys, but if you have any thoughts concerning that, uh, let me know down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.